Uh, the thing is, you know, back in Hollywood lore, you always hear about people like Lana Turner discovered out of nowhere, out of the blue, you know, at a soda fountain. Mm -hmm. And yet you have your own kind of old Hollywood lore so kind of story. Ha tell us how you were discovered. Spring break in Florida. Oh, my gosh. Just who would think that a spring break trip would turn into something like this, you know? Good old Andrea just scouting at the beach. And so how did that happen? A middle-aged British woman walks up to you uh, as you're sunbathing? What? Tell me exactly how that works. And it wasn't even necessarily walking. She chased me. And <laughs> oh, even better. Yeah, I know, right? But, you know, just something about a British woman in a cowboy hat and overalls just makes you trust her. And it's really sweet and... Um, really bizarre I don't know I guess it was just kind of a moment of leaping just like yeah man like cool whatever just let's get in the car and go yeah now you were with friends I assume mm -hmm. and so you just said goodbye to your friends or did you all go together and talk to um, the director well, no I mean that first night she came and she came to our hotel where we were staying and actually I improv a little with one of my friends shout out to Taylor and <laughs> um, and then the next day we went to breakfast and that was where it was a literal, I took my suitcases out of my friend's car and I put them in Andrea's and was like, all right guys, know where I'm at, don't let her kill me, see you later. And wow. there, yeah. That, yeah, that's <laughs> as crazy as anything that happens in the movie. Yeah. So what was your life like before Andrea approached you uh, in Florida? I feel like it was just as kind of spontaneous. It was one of those things where people were always like, what what's today, Sasha? Like what happened? You know, um, but definitely not like this. I was in school. I was studying psychology and social work. I was just aimlessly walking around trying to figure really? out what I'm doing in life. Yeah, that's that that really is amazing. <laughs> and you had no one of the things I thought was uh, interesting about. What you said last night, you talked about you never thought of yourself as like an actress because you kind of thought of yourself as, oh, kind of awkward or uncomfortable. Talk to me about why that is because you seem like a natural, having seen the movie now, you seem like a natural actress. It's, it's such a weird thing when I hear that people are like, oh, me natural and so comfortable because I'm literally screaming on the inside all the time. I'm just... Um, like the spotlight and things being on me and speaking, I don't know, it's just not something that I'm like comfortable with it's so weird but I guess the setting that Andrea created and now I guess the way my mind works when I'm passionate about something you can kind of forget the camera and forget everything that's going on like I still never I never even really registered to me that I made a movie till I saw a trailer and was like ah really that's out there yeah. so you actually could leave live your life again in the context of the movie and you weren't conscious of it. I would think if I was doing a first time big movie like that, I'd be looking to the camera every time. You just lived your life and you actually were allowed the cameras to sort of, you know, go away in your mind? Exactly. I mean, wow. the only time I ever noticed is when Robbie got the Velcro stuck in my dreads, and that's the only time. But <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a weird thing. I've kind of just let it dissolve and was just in those moments. And now it's like, oh, whoa, what? Okay, <laughs> yeah. so now, so you, you're a first time actress. You've never thought of yourself as an actress. Now you have a big movie. What was it like to see yourself up on the big screen? Was it how you thought you'd look? Was it mind-blowing or...? Super mind-blowing. I mean, I hate even hearing, like, a voice record of me or <laughs> seeing any, like, picture. But I guess in that moment, I mean, we've only seen it once, and I saw it at Cannes, and it was such a surreal moment, and I was just kind of... I was just remembering how I felt that day, what I was thinking, who was around, and I was just looking at the kids. I guess I wasn't really registering with myself that that's me up there. You know, every time I see the poster, and it's just like, <laughs> so, yeah. And so you actually, since you brought it up, I'll just have to ask you. I mean, here you are. You don't even think of yourself as an actress. You're just on a beach in Florida, and then a year or maybe a two. I don't know how long the process was. You find yourself at the Cannes Film Festival in faraway France. What was that experience like? Were you fetid like a queen? It was, it's so weird to be taken care of. I'm like, what, you know? And I remember being on the plane with Riley on the way there, and I was just kind of, I just looked at her, and I was like, yo, Riley, like, I'm from Texas. <laughs> what is this? It was the most surreal, crazy, like, exactly. Till this day, I'm still like, what? I'm sorry, what happened? What, we actually did that. It's, it's I, it's indescribable. Yeah, that's 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 crazy. And then the film got great reception and won the oh, jury so prize. And now that I've seen it, I completely get it. Okay, one thing again, you mentioned this uh, last night. You said that you really connected 
with or related to Star. So in what ways do you relate to the, your main character, to the main character of the movie, American Honey, by the way? I think a lot of her characteristics as far as kind of always trying to find something good in someone or just kind of really not thinking of herself as a victim, just that's what you got to do, you got to do what you got to do, and kind of her free spirit and um, impulsive, you know, just, I mean, I'll obviously I'll hop in Andrea's car and just hop right. in the wind, like, just, yeah, just the nature of that and looking after her siblings, that that caretaker vibe that she has and just kind of down because, I mean, what else do you, what's the alternative? You know, you might as well just do it. Yeah, wow. that's, yeah. So in what ways aren't you like Star then? Hmm. I definitely do think she is more naive than me. Okay. I, mean, I even had moments where I was like, chill, you know. Um, other than that, I really... I can't think of anything, okay. which is why it's like a weird little, I keep seeing that's passions good. at a star. <laughs> well, that's great casting, <laughs> if you feel that yeah. bonded with the character. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I, I want to ask you, um, I was stunned to find out that uh, it sounded to me like what you said last night, no one in the cast knew beyond like a 24-hour lead what was going to happen. Is that really true? So, for instance, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm not doubting you, I just find it um, baffling. So when you, for instance, you have this on-again, off-again relationship, uh, your character, Star does, with Jake. Mm -hmm. You really didn't know, two weeks down the road, whether you were going to be with him or without him. I mean, against, you really don't, you just play it completely in the moment. Exactly. You know, I always tell Andrew, I'm like, I'm getting whiplash. Like, I, I sometimes just be like, so tomorrow, am I going to be happy with him or not? Because i got to set myself up for this. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's too much. And sometimes even Andrew would be like, how, what's the ending going to be like? How should we end it? And we'd all just kind of throw in ideas like, oh, I think someone's going to get shot. And, you know, and yeah. just maybe this person, I don't know. Yeah, it was a, just never knew. So, given that, I mean, there are some, there. it's discreetly shot, but there are some really intimate moments that you have to play. Was it, did, and you didn't know, you had like a 24-hour warning that you were going to do that. Do you think that made it easier to do those scenes or harder? Because, I mean, it's really, you are some, in some tight clinches with Jake, played, by the way, by Shia LaBeouf. So that's, a, that's a one name I think that people will recognize from this movie. How, how was that for a first-time actress? I think that was the beauty of it, since I had no time to prepare, no time to freak out, no time to be like, wait, what are we actually doing? You're just mm. in that moment, in that zone, in the creation that Andrea set up for you, and you just kind of go for it. Yeah, it's kind of absent-mindedly just doing functions, you know, you're just in that moment. And so did Andrew, the director, talk to you about why you did certain things, or did she just tell you to do it? For instance, there's a scene that I, ends up having real repercussions later in the movie, I think, in a kind of a, a thematic way. There's a hornet or a bee, and you catch, catch the hornet with a bee with a glass, and mm -hmm. then you, and you let it free, you know, outside. Did she tell you, okay, we're shooting this scene because this is going to, you know, represent something or other, or did she just say, listen, here's what I want you to do. Catch the bee and then let it go outside. Some, that one, I think, was more of a, it was just there, so she was like, oh, wait, I want you to save it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so sometimes she would give me a little glimmer of, like, her ideas of why this was happening. Okay. And sometimes it was one of those situations where I'd just be like, this has a reasoning all in Andrea's mind. Don't really know what it is, but okay. I'm going to maybe think of my own or just kind of go for it. Yeah, it's just yeah. sometimes, sometimes not. And that didn't hamper you, because I would think as an actress it would be hard. You like want to create kind of an arc for your character, but you didn't know moment, day by day where it was going to go, so you just, you really lived in the moment, which I think is, is one of the sort of aesthetic uh, impulses of the entire movie. It really feels like you're just, you're on the road with these mm -hmm. kids and that's what they're doing. One quick question about what you're actually doing. Can you see yourself selling magazines? Like the, those kids, I mean, that I've had kids come up to my door three or four times, and my heart breaks for them every time they, they come up because I feel like, oh, my God, this is such a hard slog. Can you see yourself doing that ever? A Maybe not of, now. A part of me is like, yeah, I could just be like, oh, hey, man, blah, blah, blah. But also, like I said, I am so awkward that I wouldn't want to just go up and... Hey, um, but yeah, no, 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 that's not, I need to do like a background job. <laughs> One of the things that really rang true, again, um, throughout, I think it's a fantastic performance, but when you first go to that first uh, house with Jake, you basically just blow his sail. I mean, you undercut him. 
Was that, uh, again, did that feel natural to you to be able to do that? Because at the same time that you're undercutting Jake, I think most of the audience is with you, like, hey, don't put the shine on this lady so hard. Yeah, yeah, I felt, mm, I guess I kind of felt bad that I was just screwing up this whole thing, but I liked Andrea's idea of, I don't really care so much about that part. I'm just, like, happy to be in this, you know, something different. So it was kind of fun to just be like, let's just play with it. And, yeah. Uh, so you realize it's a real person and you're just picking up their random statues and, yeah. So you didn't have the, uh, the, uh, uh, ability to see where your character was going, but at the end of the movie, you know, you knew where she had been. Do you think that your character, Star, is in a different place psychologically at the end of the movie than she was at the beginning of the movie? Oh, definitely. I think now she knows that there's a world and a life that she can choose to have outside of the one that she grew up in, and that, you know, possibilities are endless, and she just kind of has a new sense of herself and life everything yeah definitely which seems to me a nice parallel with your own life exactly <laughs> I, that's why i think it's such a that's why it's so personal and that's why it's so beautiful because i'm like yeah girl we can, anything can happen you know i'm just rooting for it at the same time you know? yeah because it already has yeah. so one of the cool things not only you but that entire cast except for i guess there are three professional actors shy is the one that has the, a, a big role otherwise everybody else is a non-professional they're, they're like non-actors. Mm -hmm. So I've got to ask, the, the bonding experience, you guys felt so tight. It just, it, it felt like a really natural experience, but you had never met any of those people before. So what was it like, how did you guys trick us into thinking you were bonding, or were you really bonding having made that movie with all of these uh, other magazine sellers? That is my, that is my family, that is my heart. So that's not a trick, it's not fake, it's, that is so real. We bonded really hard immediately and had you know seven and a half weeks together in a yeah. van and motels it's hard not to especially with such amazing people that's cool yeah. and you said again last night you mentioned that uh you really feel like it was representative of your generation or at least you felt like this was the, these were your people or you could relate to this this generation can you talk a bit about what this movie represents for you i mean how is it like i've got kids that are just like a 24 year old mm -hmm. just a little bit older than you um is there an insight into your generation in this movie? I think it's I, my generation living in this part of America, definitely, because it's that point of, I think we're so free and so unapologetic because look what we've been handed, look what we have to work with, and you have nothing to work with, and you really kind of aren't afraid to just be on the road or that's your only option and you gotta I'm constantly looking for the beauty in such a dark place and that's what they're doing you know that's why they're so beautiful it's they this is who they are and they don't care that they're different they don't mm -hmm. care that they're being just I mean it hurts but you're just like well whatever man I live in life I gotta hustle I gotta make it and yeah so it's definitely in our generation because I mean everyone is we're all street cast pretty much you know so yeah. it's true it's, Real. So Shia was the one uh, professional that worked uh, mostly with uh, all the non-professionals. How did he fit in? And were you kind of, when you first met him, I assume you knew who he was. Were you sort of in awe of him? Did, were you intimidated? How did he gel and how did you gel with him? Um, the thing about it, even though he was a professional actor, Andrea isn't one to choose people just because of that. You know, if anything, she doesn't want that. <laughs> Everyone was chosen for a reason. So I knew that he was there for a reason, and here go a person. So there was no, like, an all thing. It was just like, hey, nice to meet you. What's up? We're about to be in this together. Just like I met everyone else, you know? You're just like, why are we all here? And, like, how did, what is the reason for all of it? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I've got to ask. It also was, uh, came up last night. There is a, there's a moment in the movie, right near the end, uh, sort of near the end, uh, where you are on the screen with a bear. That is, that, that, we all kind of gasped when we saw it. I mean, it's a great moment, and it can work metaphorically or theoretically, but it also had to work literally. I mean, you were, that was, <laughs> that bear was right next to you. What was that like? Why did it happen? How did it happen? And how did you pull it off? What was the experience like? Um, I mean, I found about it out about it that day. So <laughs> okay. it had That's... to work, you know, I had to be there. It showed yeah. up. Or was, maybe if I would have got a heads up, I'd have been like sick today. Sorry. Um, but it was the most, incredible 
amazing thing ever. Like, you know, you never get to just walk with a bear. And, like, I just was walking with it before, and we had a lot, I had a lot of conversations with that bear. I felt very attached to that bear, you know? And I had to. There was, he told me I had to be neutral. There's no other way to act unless I'm trying to get my head taken off, and I wasn't. So I just was, yo, dude, we're chilling. Like, what's up? What's up, bear? You know? Like, yeah. So those are the conversations. It's, 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 it's all in the sound. They're just cracking up. Just <laughs> literally having conversations with this bear. That's that's a very good. This movie asks you to do a lot of stuff, but I think that might have been the most most uh, viscerally impressive oh, yeah. to, to us in the audience. Okay, just a couple more things. Uh, first, I want to ask this you are now, I mean, I, you, you're much more aware of this than I am, but I mean, your face, first off, the poster, I mean, you, you're plastered over everywhere. This has great cred. I mean, it's a, a can prize winner. You are now mentioned in the New York Times as the biggest actresses to watch for. You are like the it girl right now. Do you have concerns about how big you could become? Do you have paparazzi issues at this point? I mean, what, what is... You're in uh, what it may be your life now, but what's what are you anticipating your life being once this gets a, a, a release, a full release? How I view it is I think it's such a blessing and it was meant to happen. I w I'm happy it didn't happen any sooner or later because I'm very much who I am, and so no matter what, I just I will always be who I am and interact the same ways. And even as I grow in different ways, it's just I don't worry about how that's going to be on my life. Of course, you know, there's changes and differences, but it's it's just, I still just feel like Sasha's just kind of like, oh, one, well, you know, people ask me questions. I'm like, I don't know, man, I show up, or this is what I'm doing. There's no other way to be besides who I am, because that's all I've known for this long amount of time, you know? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't grow up into this. They just plopped me in it, so I'm like... <laughs> so can't blame me. Yeah, I'm just like... Yo, this is what this is. This is how you found me, and this is how it's going to be always. And so. you've already, I don't know if you've uh, um, actually performed yet, but you've already signed up for a couple other movies at the IMDb, is that mm -hmm. correct? Are you, what's your future look like right now, movie wise? Movie wise, I feel like my future is looking pretty just how my life is going. Who knows? And it could be anything, you know? I'm just, I'm excited for it. I'm just. Every day is something new, and it's constantly changing. You just never know what's going to happen. So even if I do have these projects, I don't know how they're going to turn out or what's going to yeah. happen with that. It's just kind of exciting to think that there's so many opportunities and that anything can happen. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I, think that's, I just think it's fantastic. Uh, what I want to ask you, this is my final question. If you, ha if, if you hadn't gone to that beach in Florida where Andrea uh, saw you, or you, you never were cast in this movie, what, do you, what would you be doing right now back in Texas? I mean, It's funny. I was, like, I was just talking about this. I see every time I'm asked that question or I think about it myself, it's just this blank white wall that comes in my eyes because I'm just like, I really don't know. This, this is, I can't imagine this not happening in a way, not so much, I don't really know how to explain this, but I guess I think this is kind of the way that I'm going about it and the way that it's unfolding and the people I've met and the experiences I've had is I get to fulfill my purpose as well as my life and career in such a creative and ever-changing way. And I, I can be a floater in this, you know, and it's still my job and it's still my actual life and everything. So I just... I don't know, you know, it's so weird to think. It, I think I'd still be feeling like something was missing. Wow. Yeah. So in, in effect, instead of, this this experience has really grounded you. Yeah. it's. Wow. I think this is one of those things that needed to happen. And I'm saying that because I have a different way of going about it. And I have a different perspective. And, you know, clearly I grow up, grew up a different way. And so, yeah, like it's one of those things that, I still feel very, that's why I don't, I don't worry about changing or anything, because yeah. it is a grounding thing for me as well. It's I get to fulfill what I always thought my purpose was as far as shedding a certain light on things and connection and interaction and art and creativity and passion, and it's like the most beautiful thing, and it's getting me excited just saying it. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. And what a great, I mean, if you never make a movie as good as American Honey, what a great life. I mean, that, that is a fantastic movie, and it's a great performance. Congratulations, uh, Shasta. I'm really glad you're here in Seattle, and good luck with the movie and your future career. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it.